This is not going to be pretty. That looks absolutely crap. Welcome back to Geeky Stuff guys. Here is an update of the M365 scooter. I've managed to uh, decipher some of the instructions that I've found online. Uh, they were in a different language. Uh, Google translated them and I think I've found the problem with my particular build. So I've took the battery out. Okay, it's really easy to set this battery out. There's two screws there, two Allen key screws and two Allen key screws uh, on this end as well. And then you just pull this out. Really easy to get this out, okay. And what I read was you need to test the voltage of the battery. You see these two contacts here. I think the output should be around 36 to 42 volts, depending on the charge. So I've got my multimeter here. Set that to 200, as you can see there. Stick one end through the plastic there. Just touching the metal. I can move it with that. Okay, so I've got 40.5. So I think it did say online between 36 and 42, depending on, on the charge. So the battery is fine. And that also indicates that these are fine as well. See these contacts? I'm, oh, by the way, I'm by no means a sort of avid electronic bloke. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing to be honest, so I'm just following instructions. But these contacts here, these are another known problem. Sometimes these can be loose or come away and you need to resolder them. But the fact that, I'm, I'm assuming the fact that that battery is reading a voltage of 40 means that all these contacts and all the batteries are a whole. They're all connected. There's no connection problems there. So it's outputting 40 volts, which is good. Now, onto the next bit, which you have to test, is this. So this is coming straight out from the battery. Now this also should be outputting uh, what this is. It's around 36 to 42. Now this is where the problem lies. So you stick one end in there, stick another one there, and instead of having 40, 36 to 42, we have 3.6 to 3.7. Now this is the exact same reading that this other guy had a problem with online on this tutorial. So what that basically means, the inside here, there's a board. I have to try and get that out. So that is the next big issue for me. We need to take this board out and there's a fuse we need to test on there as well. So it says on the instructions we need to desolder the black and the red wire. I'll rip this open. Hopefully I don't bloody kill myself. There you go guys, look, I've just took that off. That was easier than I thought. So that is disconnected and away. Okay, so I've exposed the area. This is really, really hot. Let's see, let me tap it. See how much heat I need to apply for this to move. It's starting to melt, look. There we go, it's gone. Sweet, let's wipe that off. Oh, I'm getting good at this, aren't I? Okay. This is proving very, very difficult to get this bloody thing out. Uh, there's like sort of silicon around these cables as well. And it's just trying to get something in there to, to try and prise it out. It's very, very awkward. Okay, so I've still haven't got that board out, but um, after reading the instructions, if you look at the bottom of the battery, 
there's that. We need to remove that as well because when you, we pull the board out, this is attached. And this is like a temperature sensor. Yeah. So you need to detach that from the battery. Right, we're getting somewhere. You can see all this black silicon there, which is wrapped all the way around here. I was basically ripping at it, pulling at it like that. Also these little white bits there, that's silicon, they need to be removed. And there, you yank at the silicon. I've got the big pliers in there and started to slowly pull it out. And you can see it moving quite gradually. So it's coming out. Right. I pulled it out and it came out a little bit aggressively, if I'm being honest. Um, this thing here, that connects to there. Okay, that connects to there like that. But when I pulled it out, it pulled out all together on its own. So this is the actual board and let's have a look where this fuse is. There we go. This is a fuse we need to test. It's called the Z fuse. You just see there, the Z fuse. We need to test that. So you need to set the multimeter to that setting on there. This is to test the uh, that Z fuse. And you can see it's a number one at the moment. Now, if it stays at one when we put it towards the fuse, then that means it needs changing. But if this changes to zero, that means it's fine. So I'll pop to either side. And you obviously can't see that, but the reading is still one. Okay, so that means it needs changing. Okay, so now we also need to test the um, temperature sensor. And in order to do this, we need to remove this sort of yellow silicon from the back here so we can get the, the contacts on from the multimeter. So I'm going to try and scrape away on that now. And obviously you can buy more silicon so when you are sealing up and reseal it. I think that should be enough. We need to set the multimeter to 20K, which is that one. Okay. Now, if it gives a result between 8 and 10, it's okay. All right. Otherwise, it will need to be changed as well. So, let's see what we get. Okay, 9.22, 9.18. Okay, so it's in between 8 and 10. I'm sorry I can't show you that at the moment, but it is. It's 9.17. So, that is fine. So it looks like the only thing that needs replacing then is this Z fuse. Now I've never seen anything like that before. So I'm not entirely sure how you take that Z fuse off. So there is the Z fuse. Okay, and now I'm assuming that I'm gonna to have to get into each edge or side with the soldering iron to prise that away. Hello guys, as you can see, I have made a complete mess of that lot. Okay, I've just actually fully removed it. Just removed it properly now. At the bottom you can just see there are two contacts. Yeah, one there and one there. So that's where the new fuse is going to go. And these are the other bits left from the Z fuse and it was a pain in the ass to get all rid of. And like I said, I'm just hoping I haven't damaged any components while getting in there. It does look a little bit brown, doesn't it? So, okay, I'll go and order the fuse and uh, wait patiently for that. Okay guys, so the fuses have been delivered. I could order them in packs of 10 uh, right here. They're 15 amp fuses, surface mounted as well, just like the other one. And like I said before, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. 
Let's just see if it works. So it's got to go onto there. I haven't got nothing to really sort of clean it, so just hope it works. So I'll position the fuse on there. This is going to be very, very fiddly, so please bear with me. I know for a fact it's going to bloody move out of the way, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I know what to do. What if I put a little bit of solder on the contacts? And then I've got a spare hand for it, you wanna? A bit big. Contacts are a bit big. This is not gonna be pretty. <laughs> what a bloody mess that is. Absolute mess. Oh, it's made contact, hasn't it? So, would that work? This bloody thing's got a mind of its own. Keep bloody moving. Oh, it's absolutely crap. Right, it's made in contact, so I'm just gonna test the bloody thing. So I need to re-solder this back to the battery and take some readings. Now time for the red wire. Okay, so I've resoldered the black and the red wire. Uh, that is the messy fuse that I've soldered to the board. Now, if you remember earlier on in the video, you set the multimeter to uh, that setting there. And at the minute it displays number one. We now measure the fuse, and if it stays at number one, that means it's crap. It needs changing, but if it's at zero, or a sort of similar sort of reading to zero, like zero point something or whatever, then it should be good to go. Right, it's zero, but it's bleeping. I got a clue why it's bleeping. It's zero. Let's try again. So you're getting a different reading than the uh, than the, the the crap one, which is one. Okay. Now, the other thing was to measure the output of this cable coming from the board. This should be similar output to that, I remember reading. So, let's set the multimeter to there. Okay, that should be around 40, if it's correct. If it's not correct, I'm just going to try and whack it in the scooter and see what happens. So in there, in there, it's still 3.7, you can't see that, so apologies, but it's still 3.7. Um, okay, I don't get it. Right, I'm going to put everything back together, see if it works. Um, obviously, I've said I'm not an expert, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, so if someone does, then tell me why. It was reading 3.7 and not 40. That's if it works anyway. So, next mission is trying to get this thing back in there. So, the big thing is this this has got to connect to the board still. If you twist the board around, it's there. So, Okay, I'm going to desolder them from the battery and then put the board in and then solder it afterwards. I think that'll be a little bit easier, so bear with me. Okay, so desoldered, that has to go in like that. And also this has to go back down at the bottom because that is the temperature sensor, so it needs to go back in there, bottom. And also they need to go in the little slots there, look guys. Got a 
think about how these cables are going to root. Okay, so that black cable roots through there and through there. So this looks pretty good to sort of push down all the way. Ooh, that's it, I think. So that should just need a solder in there. I don't think I've done too bad for saying I don't really do all this sort of stuff. Hmm. Doesn't look pretty. Both ends are soldered onto the battery. So the battery's there, controller's in, all soldered, we have the connectors here. The only bit I'm worried about is the temperature sensor at the bottom. Okay, I hope that is pretty much it. I'm going to now pop the scooter on the table, pop the battery in, and uh, see if we get any activity. Okay, she's on there. She's ready for the battery to be inserted. Concern. No explosions, which is good. Let's see if it turns on. It turns on. Wow, it's on. Oh dear. <laughs> It's on, look, lights on as well. Jesus. How did I do that? Right, let's spin this round, the wheel. Let's spin the real wheel round, and then try the acceleration, so. Yeah. Super. Bloody working guys. That's it. Okay, so the charger's plugged in and you can see that light blinking. Okay guys, so I've got the scooter working, which I'm very, very happy with. Uh, but for some reason, the Bluetooth on this doesn't seem to be uh, working or my phone isn't picking up the device because there are some settings that you can change on the phone which will alter some of the settings on on this scooter. Um, so I'm going to put it all together and then we'll try and scratch my head and think why the Bluetooth ain't working. Got the scooter down here. Now is the proper test. Will it carry my 110 kilos? It did before but I'm wondering whether it will put any strain on since the repair. works. Definitely works.
and it's broke again. Oh my god. It's gone again. It's gone again. Flipping heck. Absolutely gutted. Can't believe it. It seemed to turn off um, after I, because I did break rather hard. Um, and when I come to a stop near my front door, then the light went off. And I did read um, about the issues of the, the braking system and, and the power. But the Bluetooth's not working, so I can't get into the buddy scooter to change the setting. So I fixed it and I broke it again. So maybe um, might need to use a higher ampage of fuse, possibly. Uh, I don't know. But um, I hope this video has helped. Um, you'll certainly get it, you know you'll certainly get it fixed. If your Bluetooth is working on yours, you can connect it to the Ninebot app and um, reduce the power um, to weak, I believe it is, just to reduce the the power. So hopefully you will not get any sort of um, breakages or shorts again. And uh, hopefully it will keep on working. So I'm going to get back to the drawing board and see if I can repair it properly. But in the meantime. You might be able to get your scooter back on the road properly. Uh, fingers crossed if you do. Any questions, please comment below. I'll try my best to answer them. But as I said, I'm not a, um, I'm not a guru in this sort of stuff. I've had to teach myself and, uh, and do it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Please give the video a thumbs up. And I'll see you very soon.